Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Baka 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 Podcast. Baka. 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 It's amazing how every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special mini soda, Baka Baka Baka. I say it's special because it's not special enough for we're going to talk about anime. We're going to talk about Avengers Endgame because while we are anime nerds, we are also other kinds of nerds. And what kind of nerd isn't ecstatic about Avengers Endgame? So we want to talk about it. This will be heavy with spoilers. It's been a couple weeks since it came out now. So hopefully, you know, the spoiler thing was dropped by the directors officially you can now talk about spoilers out loud but do know if you haven't seen it you probably shouldn't listen to us uh yeah. we will we'll, we'll try to think of ways that this was a movie was an anime how it would have been a little different if we can okay i need to, to get some off my chest real quick though <laughs> uh, it's like, you? fine <laughs> Okay, we have the Iron Man to my Captain America. Jeremy, how are you? Still alive and kicking. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I guess the spoiler doesn't drop. That's right. Careful. <laughs> what you been up to? Um, Actually, school is finally done. So I've just been kind of uh, catching up on things around here and playing a little bit of that battle tech when I get opportunity. Otherwise, it's been pretty uneventful. Did they come out with a new expansion? They did. Um, well, I can't remember what it's called, but basically what it unlocks is like three or four new mechs, none of which I've actually seen in my playthrough yet. And um, uh, flashpoints, that's what it's called. And flashpoints, which are a type of mission where uh, you actually go into a contract for a period of missions and you don't get a chance to go repair in between. Ooh, so you got to manage really well. Yep, make sure you got enough mechs for replacement, do a good job on the missions, but they pay a lot better. Okay. And then the Everett Ross to my Black Panther. Jason, how are you? Everett Ross. Who's that? Exactly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he, it's, uh, you know, Bilbo Baggins uh, in Black Panther. The, um, oh, I get the Fed agent. He was the Fed, Fed, Fed agent, yes. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. How are you? <laughs> um, been just super busy, uh, with soccer and work and everything. But in between, when I get a chance, because I'm still way behind on Baca breakdown. Sorry about that. I'll get those videos out as soon as I can. Um, been I I, I revisited XCOM two, uh, because uh, War of the Chosen came or went way on sale this past winter. Uh, Steam sale, and so I finally got a chance to touch it, and uh, really digging it. Unfortunately, I still am suffering from the I'm in the tile next to you, and I have a 98% <laughs> chance to hit, and I still miss. That's that's getting pretty old pretty quick, but uh, or or the I miss four Overwatch shots in a row, but then they hit me from behind full cover. Yeah. It's like, uh, okay. Yep. So there. my my favorite part of everything you just said is that you just apologized for videos not being done when <laughs> this won't release for a week and a half, which means either no one will have any idea what you're talking about or you're, you're effing up so bad. <laughs> right? <laughs> so you're far behind. <laughs> yep, you're That's predicting. Great. And my name is Troy, and I was the first one to see Avengers Endgame. Uh, <laughs> and yep. I have been smashing because I finally got a Nintendo Switch. You did, you did. Oh, okay. We got a. Did you manage to get the uh, membership that was discount free, whatever? I can't remember. Oh, you got to get that if you haven't yet. I do you have Tetris ninety nine? I thought I signed up for that. I got. I forgot to check. Okay. Yeah, because we need to trade some names here. Okay. With that said, Jason, you want to get something off your chest before we jump into this mini set proper? Um, yeah, so I went to, you know, as all of you know, I spent a, about three weeks rewatching movies just so I could prepare for this movie. Um, <laughs> I, I actually got to go with a bunch of work buddies uh, during a team event to see Endgame. And during the movie, someone leans over and is like, 
is, is that Ant Man? And I was like, hmm. well, why, why are you here? Are you, why are you asking? This? Yeah, why are you here? He's like, hey, yeah. And then Wasp comes on. He's like, oh, it, who is that? I was like, it's Hope. It's it, it's the Wasp. Why are you here? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the, uh, this you know, it's a free movie. It's like okay. The, this movie was like, I hope you paid attention to the past ten years because we're going through it all. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, okay. So there's, I mean, this was a long movie. Uh, so let's start with just kind of a general review, and then I want to go just really quick touch on the three main sections of the film and our highlights and low points. So, Jeremy, what was your review? Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. There were a few things that I kind of, I, I kind of wish that they had, I don't know if resolved is the right word because maybe it's a direction that they want to take the characters like Thor's belly thing. I, I don't know. I, I would have liked to have seen Thor go back to being Thor. Um, and I would have liked to have seen Hulk go back to being Hulk. It, it was nice to see some kind of variation and in something interesting or comedic or, or things like that. But, um, I don't know. I, I, I just missed the characters the way that I'm used to seeing them. And I think that that would have been nice to see them go back to that. But um, other than that, there were a few little things that I would classify as plot holes. We can get into them later. But um, for the most part, I actually really liked it. I, I would give it like a, a probably getting close to 80 percent. Jason, how about you? Um, I disagree with Jeremy fervently. Uh <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not starting we'll debate when we get to the section where you adjust your review <laughs> i mean i think jeremy's wrong uh, <laughs> yeah I, I thought the movie was fantastic um i'm actually every time i come up with a criticism i can either justify it away or uh it's not that bad uh anyways the yeah i laughed i almost cried I cheered that this was near perfect movie for the end of a huge series. Do we, do we, do we have to mention crying in our review? <laughs> <laughs> Home uh, I know Troy did several times. <laughs> no, okay. He actually had to watch it like three times because he cried at different times each time. So <laughs> when I usually say I cried at something, what I mean is like, I got tears in my eyes. And I welled up and I like to be over dramatic about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Fair, fair warning. At the end of this film, for five minutes, I had tears running down my face and I could not get them to stop. Five whole minutes. That's never happened to me in a movie. Uh, I was really overwhelmed <laughs> and I'm not super proud of it, but I am not also going to be ashamed of it. Good to own it. Fair enough. Uh, my review is that while I do not think it is a perfect film, I think this is a, this is a film history moment that mm -hmm. stuck the landing. Um, you had to take 22 films. You had to take 10 years. You had to find a way to make all of that worth it. And then you had to find a way to not lose people who didn't fully know who Ant-Man was. And I would not envy anyone having to write that. Um, they made choices that surprised me. They made choices I don't always agree with. But, I, I mean, on a nerd level... There's things that happen in this movie that if you told me when when uh, Tony Stark talks to Nick Fury that that's where we were going, I would have laughed at your face and said that's impossible. Um, and that's enough for that. Even if there is squabbles about it, I don't even care. I, I don't even I don't even like judge this on film merit because it's something new and unique to film history. Mm -hmm. Um. It's funny because at the end of this movie, I was not at a point of exhaustion or feeling like, oh, that was a long movie. I didn't get that feeling at all. Mm -hmm. I was I was ready for more. Like, I was like, oh, man, it's over. Transformers oh. cannot <laughs> help no. but make a four hour movie that felt like a 14 hour movie. Um, I think it has and, to do with the, the visual spectacle fatiguing your eyes. Too. Not just that, but just oh, absolute awful storytelling. Yeah, um, a bit of an entity. Are, are we, we're not here to bash on Transformers. I know, I know, but what I'm I saying... I can bash on Michael Bay all day. I'm not here no, to bash no, 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 that's not what I... The point I'm trying to draw is there are plenty of long movies 
this did not feel like a long movie, even though it was what three hours. Mm-hmm. I I actually don't fully agree with that. There were a couple parts, and, and part of it was me being impatient. Like I want to know what's going to happen. Let's give me it to me. Uh, but there were a couple parts where I was like, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> I don't know. Every probably... scene sold it for me. That's fine. Okay, so let's <laughs> <laughs> let's break it down to the three main sections. So we have our opening, which is basically the wrap up of Infinity War. Um, guys, they literally kill Thanos in fifteen minutes in this movie. That's insane. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was wondering where they were going with it, but uh, when we get further into the story, I'll, I'll mention this again. I mean, I, oh, they're like, okay, we're going to go find Thanos. And I'm like, ah, oh, they're going to get their butt kicked and then have to regroup. And then they win. And I'm like, what? In <laughs> moments. Like, it barely took any effort. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of weird. In chat, you also mentioned quite a while ago, like, when we had finally all seen it, you were like, hey, is it weird that Thor didn't use Bifrost to go there? <laughs> and it didn't even click in my mind. But I, I think you're right. Like, the more that I think about it, the more I wonder if they knew where it was. And clearly they did by that point then that it does seem kind of odd that he didn't just be like i'm gonna get there as fast as i can because he was clearly in an emotional turmoil or he also could have taken everyone <laughs> yeah exactly um but you know they had their own flight plan to get there uh i do absolutely love that the marvel universe decided the way you hyperspace around the galaxy is flying through yes. little hexagons and that yeah, no matter exactly. what movie you're watching that is now canon and that came from guardians of the galaxy the weirdest superhero <laughs> movies ever <laughs> yeah that was great yeah um also that thanos you know because we've spent a year being like okay they're gonna get the stones they're gonna do it and they get the thanos he's like no i, I got rid of the stones i knew you would want to do that <laughs> everything every geek has said the past year i flushed that down the toilet i'm not stupid <laughs> <laughs> yep uh, I thought that was really cool. Um, I I like that Captain Marvel was used sparingly. She kind of is like the Superman where it's like you got to find a reason to get rid of her. I also kind of think that's why they made Thor fat because you need to you differentiate to... between them. Like, yeah, well, yeah. And, and Captain Marvel, I think, suffers from the same problem with Thor is they're so powerful when they're standing next to Steve Rogers. How do you make it possible that Steve mm-hmm. Rogers still belongs in that fight? Uh, and that's like, OK, you need to go destroy the seven ships while I fight the ground guys or you need to be in another galaxy taking care of galactic stuff so I can fight Hydra. Uh, and it'll be interesting how they go because they have made her the most powerful character in the MCU now, how they has keep that, her at arm's length. Beneficial, like because even in like interviews and stuff, it, I'm not clear no, she but I, I would say her. she's she's so. on par with Thor, at least. And so, it's, like I said, she suffered. Yeah. I think she suffers. And Hulk, too. Like, mm-hmm. you had to send Hulk away after a movie because, yeah. hey, you can't be here for Civil War because if you're on any side, they win. They just win. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I'm wondering about that. I Maybe. like the way they explained away her absence, though, that, hey, Earth is not the only place with sentient life that needs help. Yeah, it's really plausible. Um, Like I said, and... and I actually thought it was handled well. I, I just I'm a little worried about in the future when when she's available. Because again, you gotta remember, like she gave Nick Fury this pager for emergencies, and then the entire New York got invaded by the aliens, and he didn't turn it on. <laughs> the Avengers are like yeah. fighting for their lives. Like, wait, you had that waiting, and yeah. okay, <laughs> maybe yeah. he figured they'd win. But that that's a problem, like I said, with Superman, with comics in general, when you have characters of huge power differences. And I, I, Especially when you introduce them after the fact. It always will create like these these issues with historically, why didn't this happen? Right. And, 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 exist. You know, in the Spi- Spider-Man yeah. trailer, he's like, why can't Captain Marvel be here? Well, she's off world right now. And they're going to have to keep doing that <laughs> like in every movie. Why can't Captain Marvel just fly in and do what she does? Uh, Because there was this other thing. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Which is really weird because it has so far. I mean, we've had 22 movies now, right? Mm -hmm. That's really been a very rare thing. Like very rarely does anybody ask, you know, where's Doctor Strange or where's Hulk or where's Iron Man or, you know. They do it with Thor, but they're like, we don't know how to get a hold of Thor. Thor just kind of shows up when he wants. That's true. They do do it with Thor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
anything in the that first part? Um, well, it depends on you're moving to. Uh, well, I, I, I'm so there's three sections of the movie I consider. The, there's the pre five years, the after the five years, and the time travel heist, and then the final battle. Okay, so we're not get we're not to where we go look for Thor. No, no. Okay. I would say that's the start of the time travel. I go into this movie, said to my daughter, Oh my God, Tony Stark has to talk to Rocket Raccoon at some point in this film. And I am all about it. And the moment it came, I whooped. <laughs> <laughs> I totally thought you were a Build A Bear. And I was like, Yes, that's what I wanted. Because <laughs> Tony Stark's not the kind of guy who can see a talking raccoon and just let it slide. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, okay. So into the next part. So, Five year time jump. How'd you guys feel about a rat turning on the machine? <laughs> I thought it was okay. I mean, yeah, it was. It's comic y. Yeah. If you figure that Doctor Strange is like, okay, this is the one where we win, and it's the one where yeah. a rat accidentally flips <laughs> the switch. <laughs> oh, That's going great. back a little bit, I did enjoy how uh, when, when Tony finally came back, it wasn't. You know, even though they had just suffered this tragedy, it, this tragedy, it wasn't this camaraderie reunion. Mm. It was pain. It was mm. regret. He's, it was he's failure. broken. Yeah, um, I thought they handled it brilliantly. That here's the, you know, this brilliant mind that's been you know suffering since the first Avengers, mm -hmm. and doing everything in his power to prevent this, um, and that's. You know, he, he he lashes out until he passes out. And I, yeah, I thought, yeah, a broken man. And he doesn't go with them for that final battle. He's like, no, <laughs> right. you will lose. Uh, but they don't. But yep. Okay. So again, five year time jump. Absolutely loved Ant Man's coming back to San Francisco and meeting his, the scene where he reunites with his daughter. I was like, oh no. Cause. His relationship with his daughter is one of the big best parts of the Ant-Man movies, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when, uh, you know, I'd seen all the memes for Infinity War before I actually saw Infinity War. So I kind of knew that, you know, everyone was being turned to dust. So when I saw the end of Ant-Man and Wasp and, and then the after credits, I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> <They're> not again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. But that place. that puts, you know, that moment in context for the timeline of what happened. Right. So. But yeah, uh, Paul Rudd, can we just take a second to just praise Paul Rudd acting as Paul Rudd? Like <laughs> he's he's just a joy to watch on screen. He is. Uh, yep. I've, I've been a big Paul Rudd fan for a long time now. <laughs> I was really happy when he started his name, man. Um one of my big complaints in, in this section it matches what Jeremy said. Um, Professor Hulk. I I had expected Professor Hulk for a while now. I, I've seen Hulk getting smarter and smarter. I'm like, oh, we're heading towards Professor Hulk or, or Grey Hulk. One of them. Joe Fixit is also one of his names. Um, and I was excited for that. But then it happens off screen. And that's such a bummer because every time Hulk seems to have major character progress, it happens off screen yeah. because they don't feel like they can handle Hulk or something in the story. I Hulk is weird in the MCU and it kind of bothers me. I don't have a, I don't have a complaint about him being professor Hulk. I just have a complaint. I didn't get to see it happen. I, and I, I think you, I think I see a place where you could naturally put it into this story and we could see Hulk turn into professor Hulk. And, and that would be really cool in, in a good moment, but off screen so yeah see for me it was um it was the combination of the two most physically powerful characters both losing a big chunk of their power really or at least losing the ability to or desire to you know really act on that power and so that's why like professor hulk was interesting i, I saw it more as like a novelty because like you say it happens off screen so for me it was like who is this this is not hulk last time i saw hulk this is not who he was this is a different character and this character like he thinks that it's it's below him and and uncivilized to be brutish 
as as Hulk would normally be. And and that was entertaining. And I did laugh when it happened, but I kept waiting like when is he going when are we going to see the Hulk? When are we going when is Hulk going to get his moment to shine? And you could argue that he does get his moment to shine later on when he uses the gauntlet, but it just seemed like I mean the show when we look, get our last scenes with Hulk, he's got his arm in a in a sling. And like this is not the Hulk that I know. And like you say, this is the culmination of so many different movies. And so they have to figure out how they're going to write everything and make everybody have something that makes them unique and interesting. But when, when Hulk was this weird change in character and then Thor got this weird change in character that again, I laughed at at first, but as it went on, I kind of, I started to get a little bit frustrated with it. Like these characters are not, it's like, they're not really here. It's like something else is substituted for them. Mm. Um, no. I can kind of agree with that with Hulk. I thought Thor was really well done. Um, I actually really like the fat Thor thing. I like that he didn't change back automatically. I like that. <laughs> I like the portrayal of depression as yeah. a guy who welcomes you into his house. Like, yeah, I'm still drinking and eating and playing video games. I'm doing great. And it's like, oh, you're not. You're not. You're not doing great. <laughs> uh -huh. Because if you think about it, he got his revenge. He. He, he literally killed the guy that did all this wrong to him. And what happened? He and, dove into a deep, deep depression. Not only that, but Thor has lost so much in the yeah. past two movies. In, in Ragnarok, his um, his, his, da his dad dies, his home destroyed. And then in, in Infinity War, his brother dies, his best friend dies, half his people are wiped out. And he never has time to deal with that. And then when it isn't dealable with him falling into depression makes sense. And then what does depression look like for Thor? Well, it looks like alcohol for all time. Um, <laughs> all of the alcohol. Um, and, yeah. and I, if they keep Thor fat going forward, like if he, that would be a little odd, but I think if they hear it and I like that there wasn't like a, a snap fix. Oh, I'm hot again. Um, and also it, it makes me laugh that there, since they kept it such a good secret, that there's so many people like, I'm going to go to this movie. I'm going to see hot Thor. And he's got yeah. the big belly slapping it. And, <laughs> and, and that, that tickles me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, I kept waiting. Cause like when he's saying, you know, my blood is lightning. I, I kept thinking, okay, you know, he's as guardian. Maybe obviously some of the as guardians we've seen do have pot bellies. It's not unusual that they are fat. One of the, one knows? of the three warriors was. Yeah, yeah, but but who knows? Maybe maybe his lightning blood could like eat up all them calories really fast. No, I want a I want a I training can, montage. You want a training montage? <laughs> in Guardians of the Galaxy three. Let's have a let's have him and Star Lord just working out, pumping yeah. iron. He has, <laughs> he has Guardians of the Galaxy montage. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Um, how how did we feel about time travel, Jason? I hate it. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see an, an, as much as I despise it. Um, I didn't see a good path forward, so I kind of have to let this one slide. Um, mm. because uh, the stones are gone. How else do you get the like? It's not like Captain Marvel can come and snap her fingers and everything's back to normal. Um, mm. and also if. <laughs> the movie ended with Thor walking away from Thanos' body. That'd be a real short movie. <laughs> um, so I I wasn't a fan of it because it always creates a bunch of mess, especially around alternate timelines and paradoxes. Uh, but by the end of the movie, I was not okay with it, but I could let it slide because it was such a fantastically written story. I don't have your guys' issues with time travel, even though I do realize when you go to time travel, you almost always automatically create problems. Um, I thought the choices they made in their time travel rules was pretty much as good as you can get. And I enjoyed the fact from a writing standpoint, it's like, okay, we're going to take a victory lap through the whole MCU <laughs> with you guys yeah. and, and look at things from fresh perspectives and see kind of like a almost behind the scenes version of all this stuff. You, you know, so in, in love and also show character growth by saying, showing you where they were, where they've come from, how they um, react to their previous yeah. selves. <laughs> I, I honestly haven't even considered like, do I care that this was for the stones plot wise? No, because really the, the purpose of this is like, 
one more time around the track just for fun. And and I'm okay with that. Um, I did love the the double Steve Rogers fight. That was yeah, pretty great. That was the uh, the hail hydra in the hail in Hydra's the great. The, it subverted your expectations so hard, and I loved it uh, because I thought it was just going to be a repeat of you know Civil War. Um, and then I again with Thor, uh, and I think that's what the what really stood out to me was Thor's story arc here because when he saw his mom and they first start conversing it was the first time I teared up. I was just like this was such a beautifully well done scene of a broken man who got to see his mom one last time. This movie makes Thor two better. And that's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even remember what happened to his mom in Thor two. I don't remember anything from Thor two. Yeah. So that's pretty, that's pretty normal. And this movie says, Hey, you should probably go back and rewatch those. Yeah. <laughs> Understand why he cares about his mother dying. Yeah. Um, the time travel thing for me, um, I enjoyed the heist aspect of it. I like I like a well done heist movie, and I thought that they did a good job carrying that. Um, but can you guys explain? Are they in different dimensions when they go back, or are they just in their native dimension in the past? Which is it? Are they in a different parallel one? Does it break off because they go back? Yes, that one. That's what I thought. So if I understand that correctly, then just the very core of this introduces a vast number of problems in to do with resources, because you have infinite resources. If you can go back in time to parallel dimensions, you never have to access the same dimension. You can just keep going back and get all the pen particles you need, redo your tests and try again and you know, there's just there's so many different things that it introduces uh, later on when Captain America goes back in time to put everything back the way it's supposed to be, you know, give the gems back to people, but then decides to stick around and stay there, but shows up at the bench. It it introduces this new layer of, OK, so did he like do some kind of weird thing where he comes back to this dimension and then walks over to the bench or yes. like, well, he has to. Yes. According to the rules, that that is necessary. He, he lived a life in an alternate dimension and then found a way back from that alternate dimension to there, went and waited on that bench, passed off the shield from the alternate dimension. So is he going to go back there? No, I, I um, because at this point, Peggy would be dead. Yeah. Okay. Because she died in Captain America Civil War, right? Yes. Yes. He, he goes to her funeral in Civil War. So as of Civil War, she dies. Um, so okay. she she would be dead in that timeline too. Yeah. I guess a natural lifespan, right? And and who knows? You know, he probably went up to Iron Man in that universe. Was like, hey, I, I need to, I need to, where to get back home, please? I mean, they didn't, they didn't tell that story. It's, it's, it's a plot contrivance. It's not a yeah. whole because it's not impossible. They, it's definitely doable. It's definitely within realm of possibility. Um, can I also get a shout out for the Guardians of the Galaxy's opening from a new point of view? <laughs> for, yes, not seeing uh, Star Lord from his point of view, but seeing it from someone else just dancing to their ear man with no music playing, look oh, like yeah. an idiot. Oh, I yeah. love that. <laughs> that was really good. Um, I I also really appreciated that even though there were two Nebulas. They both had the exact same mechanical things going on, meaning their computer could read both of them at the same time. I, I, I'm not a big fan of that because that seems kind of like a quick plot contrivance to bring I don't think back into the story. You've got, two, you've got two of the exact same computer. I mean, if, if they're both reaching out to a central point. And just, then that means she forgot to turn off her Wi-Fi. And <laughs> right. yeah, like, where's the central processor housed? Is it, it external or internal? It it's okay. It's fine. It it just they needed a way to bring Thanos got a free get out of jail free card. Right. If the if 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 that doesn't happen, he doesn't realize what's going on, and they automatically win. Um. And and in, in fiction, Nebula never told anybody about all of the threats that were there, about the cost of the soul, about yeah. people don't make poor decisions in stories. Then there's almost never <laughs> a reason for the story to happen, uh, especially numerous poor decisions from the same character, which I guess you could justify with her having a broken. 
background. I, I, I actually, I, I really like most everything that went on with Nebula though in this movie, especially her opening with Tony when he when she the wins. Awesome. When she wins, especially because remember she's never won a fight against Gamora her whole life. She's lost every time, always, and mm-hmm. she wins. And he's just like, "Hey, congratulations!" And she's like, doesn't know how to emotionally process what just <laughs> happened. So cool. Um, um, can I get your guys' thoughts on? Uh, Hawkeye and Black Widow's moment at the top of the Soulstone cliff. Go ahead, Jeremy. I know you, you had thoughts on this, and then I'll follow. <laughs> so, um, I understand that the two characters are, you know, they clearly have a relationship, and I remember them having little scenes here and there that indicated that there was a friendship and a potential for something more, but It was also clear to me that the most important thing to him was his family and his wife. And seeing as they're gone, it didn't really make sense to me that it would just default to whatever the next most important thing that happens to be alive is. And that happens to be her. Can you expound on that? Yeah. As in what's most important to you, even if it's gone, is still most important to you. So if you lose that thing that's most important to you, that doesn't mean that you can give something else that's not as important. But to be fair, that's just in your head canon rules. It's a technical it's a technical um, reading of the statement. And it seems like it's a very arbitrary statement. I mean, you've got like Red Skull held there to just read this statement off. And so usually when you get something like that, it's very verbatim. It's not necessarily that it has to have some nuance. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we don't know if Thanos had a family on Titan that, you know, he also could have loved even more than he loved Gamora. And Gamora was just the person he had that he currently loved the most. But you're kind of changing a different character by proposing that they have something we didn't know about to fix something we do know about this character. Yeah, I, I, I guess I still kind of just see it as an interpretation of the rules, but. I'm fine with it. And plus it builds on the relationship that they established in Avengers and, and Avengers two. Um, I'm okay. Yeah. With it. So, so for me, it was like, as they were doing that, as they were having their scene and they were fighting, it was also more of a fight over who's going to commit suicide, not really a fight over who was like sacrificing the other person, which changes the dynamic because now it becomes this thing isn't really about whether you're sacrificing anything. It happens to be whether you're present when something you care about dies. That's a very different thing from sacrificing something. There's the term sacrificing means that you are deliberately giving something up for something else. And if you are actively fighting to stop that thing from being given up, does it really qualify? Again, it's a technical arbitrary reading of something that seems to be a rule based system. But so for me, it just, well, I mean, rule-based system in the sense that. If you're going to have Red Skull there, then there must be rules. No, if it's going to be something that is is clearly outside of time, like Red Skull doesn't get to die. He's bound here to forever explain that this is the rule of how you get the soul stone, right? right? And so it's clearly there is some kind of, of very strong rule system that's binding him. It has its own rules. It goes by. We saw what it took for Thanos to get it. They're not presenting it as something that's just flexible and and, um, corporeal and we can we can stretch it and and change the rules or move the goalposts or anything. It's it's very clear and concise. And when things are left out, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's because we get to add them whenever we want. It's because they weren't pertinent. Did Red Skull die when the Soul Stone was destroyed? I don't know. I can't remember. No. Because you can, I th- I think you can, well, I don't know, th- th- that's a question I have, like, does Captain America have to return the Soul Stone, or can you make multiple Soul Stones, or yeah, is, there really, is there really just one Soul Stone, and you're just paying for it to come out to you, or are you making a Soul Stone out of a soul? I well, have a soul for a idea. But, um, so, my my biggest question was not the sacrifice, but how do you feel about Black Widow being dead dead? Oh, I like that. I thought that was really nice um, because it was more consequence. Right. Yeah. The the fact that Vision, Black Widow, original Gamora all have to stay dead. Mm -hmm. um, The fact that there's actual sacrifice because this is a big comic event. And in those big comic events, characters die. And then usually later they find ways to bring them back. (laughs) But I don't think the movies will. The movies are like, okay, 
these deaths are meaningful. They matter. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I'm down with that. Cool. Completely. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on to the final battle because I'm sure we have some stuff for there. <laughs> so before the final battle, there's that explosion. And the explosion kind of pissed me off a little bit because Ant-Man is standing right in front of the window as it explodes. But he shrunk. Oh, yeah, sure he did. <laughs> Come on. I was so irritated when that happened. I was like, did we just get another loss? You know, not that I wanted Ant-Man to die. He's one of my favorite characters in the MCU because of Paul Rudd. But uh, just, I mean, oh, the, the whole thing is a little nutty because not only do like Thor and Captain America and Iron Man end up together so they can fight Thanos together, mm-hmm. like everyone just kind of lands in perfect groups. Uh, yep. But I'm just yeah, very comic y, so I gave it a pass. Um, yeah, the, when Peter comes and meets uh, Tony, uh, no. that nearly broke me. <laughs> um, right there in front of my workmates. Good lord, uh, that was rough. Um, and then also, what was what was the other one that was pretty heart wrenching? So, uh, so, so for me, my first time crying in this was <laughs> first is that one of the most beautiful movie shots I've ever seen of Captain America alone versus an army, and knowing that he will fight that. Yeah, you know, he's not backing down here. And then on your left, which is an amazing callback all the way to Captain America 2. Um, and then the Doctor Strange portal starts spinning. My crowd was cheering. I had a really active crowd, which is, it reminded me like there's reasons you go to the theater for movie events because there's, you get to join in in the hype. Um, and then every character comes out. Spider Man came out. The crowd lost their minds. And I'm going to get emotional here, so I'm going to keep it under control. Uh, <laughs> then you get to see every character from 10 years, 22 films. Howard the Duck is there. The Ravagers are there. The the Magicians are there. Everyone's there. It's one of the most comic book looking things ever. And this movie's making billions of dollars. And it's like I was called a space boy nerd in school. And, and look what's on the screen and we came here, we did this, and they're all behind Captain America. And he says, Avengers Assemble. And I cried. Cried like a man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, th- this was a phenomenal moment in movie history. And yeah. I thought, I, th- I did not feel Captain Marvel coming out and destroying the spaceship was cheap. I, like, it felt good. I don't know why. Like in other movies, I think I would be like, oh, that's Deus Ex Machina. But it felt measured as far as her use. And it felt good. I, I did, uh, I did think it was funny. The, uh, all the women standing in a line, they tell Thanos, oh, you're going to have to fight us. That was funny. It's, it's a good thing that they all just happened to, to like gather together in that part of the battlefield for that one. I, I, I honestly thought I'd see more complaints about that. Um, my thought on that is yes, that is that is actually is probably the cheesiest moment in the entire mm-hmm. movie. But this entire final battle is pure fan service, and the look on my daughter's face when she saw that because and I even asked her, I'm like, "How did you feel about that? Was that cheesy?" She's like, "That was kick," and I'm like, "Okay, well, I got to have a ton of fan service moments. Everyone's getting fan service moments. I don't. It's cheesy, but actually, it's, it's a fan service thirty minute battle. It's cool. Like I remember the moment, but I missed that." Oh, they were all women because it was so good. Like that, that moment was really bad action. The way my daughter phrases it is, my boy Spider Man was in trouble, and everybody turned into a mom suddenly. It was not let that baby get her. <laughs> I think the only part that kind of uh, I, I felt was really Deus Ex Machina was the Tony doing the sleight of hand of the of the stones. And all of a sudden, his suit could just magically put them in the right spots on his hand. I, 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 how, did, how did he foresee he would need a need to do that? And B, how would his suit be able to like do Isn't that? that? His so, nanotech suit. Yeah, it, the 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 gauntlet is literally his nanotech, and so is his suit. They're made of the same stuff. He just let the nan, nan, nano machines pass the stones for him. Once he touched that, he had control of his gauntlet. And he just had the the nanomachine slide him over to him. It wasn't like 
uh, a sleight of hand. It was literally just controlling the nano machines of the gauntlet. He made. Now it's it's a little irritating, irritating to me that they had to go like do this whole dwarf star thing to get the gauntlet made. Or because Thanos had to go to the dwarves to get his original gauntlet made, and then Iron Man can also build one out of nano machines yeah. on Earth. That's a little odd. But that ending scene of him stealing the stones completely makes sense with how he can slide his suit now with the nano machines. Uh, okay, fine, but I think it wasn't so much that he could take them it was the fact that his he could just his suit because he he spent time making that gauntlet so it could hold the stones but then all of a sudden his suit can use them yeah it's the same nano machines well, but it seems he probably like since he made that glove he's probably made secret tweaking and altering to his suit well of course tony Maybe does but anything now <laughs> but i mean that original glove nearly killed hulk like it ruined him like he didn't just regen from it like he normally does other wounds and here's tony able to like even get to the point that he could snap his fingers yeah it killed him but like just taking the power should have killed him it killed him that's enough for me i'm good yeah <laughs> that's uh, my, I, that's my only criticism Steve. My, uh, my favorite parts of this big fight, number one, is when Scarlet Witch grabs Thanos and oh, starts dude, is good. in his armor off and is like, I will make you know who I am. <laughs> you took everything from me. I don't know who you are. <laughs> no. I love no, that. that was so good. That was one of my biggest favorite scenes was Scarlet Witch just losing her mind on Thanos. Um, probably my second favorite scene in the fight. Well, I mean, obviously it was really cool when, when Captain America got Thor's hammer. I did love that. But my second favorite scene was when Captain Marvel's flying towards the van and Thanos destroys the van and she a boom. Oh, I love that. Um, can we also, I, I love Steve Rogers, really Mjolnir. And I know you have complaints about the technical issues. I have none. Uh, <laughs> I, I, the fact that it's even hinted at in one movie and then comes to fruition here. I'm like, that's, that's amazing storytelling. Um, we get, again, comic book nerding out, and I'm not even a huge comic book guy, Spider-Man riding Mjolnir, carrying an Infinity Gauntlet to Ant-Man with the help of Black Panther. Like, that's what I mean when I'm like, if, hey, remember when Tony Stark talked to <laughs> uh, Nick Fury? What is that going to lead to? Troy. Spider-Man riding Mjolnir <laughs> across a <laughs> battlefield carrying an Infinity Gauntlet. No, no, no movie would do that. That's insane. <laughs> we can barely get X-Men in superhero suits. You know, there's no way we're going that far. <laughs> we, we went so that far. I do love the fact that they've the the Hollywood has finally started to give in to the silly costumes and realize that, yes, that's what we want. We want the costumes. <laughs> Give us the colorful, silly costumes on these characters. So I Spider love Black Panther's costume so yep. much. Yep. Spider-Man's instant kill mode. What a great callback. It's so That's good. Yep. Um, I mean, it, there's there's a couple other things in here. That How come I Captain thought Marvel great. didn't fly straight up away with the gauntlet? I, I, why Why did Thanos pop out the Power Stone and not the Time Stone and just... <laughs> I guess that's true. The Power Stone yeah. like... Yeah, it like, means he could punch her, but like every punch. other stone yeah. gives him with so many other options. Yeah, And also, why didn't Strange just grab the Time Stone and turn Tony back? Because oh. the, the Time Stone works on different time travel levels. Like You're literally just rewinding your own timeline. No, he was able to rewind only the apple. He was able to rewind only the people in Chinatown back to normal and alive. Right. I wonder how much how much that the people in Chinatown and the apple, how much influence they had over the rest of the world. Because if he was rewinding also their influence, that's that how the time stone works. I don't know. It hasn't been explored. Right. Yeah. Now see, plot hole. Now we're reaching the the, 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 the you want to talk about plot hole. Tony Stark calls Thor the Big Lebowski, which stars Jeff Bridges, who was the very first MCU villain that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's other stuff, but okay. Um, guys, quick quick question. Cap Shield, Bucky, or Falcon? I gotta give it to Bucky just because he's got the same fighting style. He was Cap's like 
sidekick. He's he's got the arm to wield it, so he's got the physical strength to do it. Um, Falcon is a completely different fighting style. Flies a lot. He's already encumbered by wings. Like it just it doesn't seem like it would be as emblematic on him. I don't know. It just doesn't. Combat wise, Bucky makes more sense. Uh, symbolism wise, Falcon makes more sense. I think the other Avengers would trust Falcon and follow his leadership, whereas everyone's gonna look at Bucky like, "Aren't you insane?" <laughs> right? Um, it's interesting though. In comics, Falcon has like enhanced superhuman stuff. Like he has his own super version of super soldierness. Really? Uh, yeah. Whereas in this one, he, he's just a pilot with with wings. Um, yeah. But. Both have been Captain America in the comics. I think Falcon is right now Captain America in the comics, but because I think Bucky usually like did it and then was like, "This ain't me. I, mm. I'm I'm a killer." Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because my my first thought was like, "Man, that really needs to go to Bucky." And then I was like, "Yeah, but who's gonna follow Bucky holding a shield?" Is is Hydra gone though? Like. Did they get rid of Hydra? I can't remember the details. Because, I mean, if nobody's there to mind control Bucky, he's gone through his redemption. Well, no one was around to mind control Bucky in uh, Civil War. It's just that somebody found an old facility with old documents. Isn't right? he cured, though? He yeah, is. Yeah. Up. Like, I thought Wakanda cured him. Yeah, Wakanda did cure him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think... Bucky's got Bucky doesn't want to be Steve Rogers because he he loves Steve Rogers too much as a brother that he he wouldn't want to be he wouldn't I, I want to take his place and I can also see Bucky like rejecting it being like I, I just got too much I'm just too yeah. much um uh hmm. Uh, the 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 funeral again when, when it was actually it was Tony Stark doing the snap. The my crowd cheered when they saw the stones in his hand, and I yelled out, "Oh no!" And <laughs> be, because then I was like, "Okay, that's who they're getting rid of." Because you, you know it's going to be Cap or Iron Man or both, I and mean, it kind of is both, really. But um, when he died, and Gwyneth Paltrow comes up and says, "You know, we'll be oh, okay," so not only do I see the character talking to the character, I see the MCU saying to Robert Downey Jr. We'll thank okay. you, thank mm -hmm. you for these years, and that's why I cried. It was, it was a thank you. It was like so grateful that Robert Downey Jr. started this and did this weird thing, and then, and that you've heard stories of him helping with contracts and stuff, and how he took mm -hmm. um, Tom Holland, the spy new Spider Man, under his wing and really helped him, and, and just so much he's done, and so many, you know, everyone else has given so much to it. Nothing to cut out them, but, and then at the end credits. Everyone's name coming up. Everyone's excited, and, and Robert Downey Jr.'s name shows up on the screen, and everyone loses their mind again. Um, mm. It was so cool. Um, that that's when I cried for five minutes straight, from from when he <laughs> snapped to the end of his funeral. It was just tears coming down my face, and it wasn't just it wasn't just oh Tony died because I kind of figured something like that was going to happen, but it, it was like thank thank you for movie history and me getting to be a part of it. You know, I didn't get to see sound of music in theaters and i don't know all that history but i got to be part of this now and you started it thank you there was a um there was actually a little kid that started just wailing just crying <laughs> so hard when when tony was dying and the, the, their parent had to take them out <laughs> oh no out the theater yeah they had to haul them all the way out they were just wailing and wailing the whole time I guess uh, my my buddy Mark went and saw it like last week, and I was like, "Oh, now you need to watch the new Spider Man trailer." He's like, "No, they're showing that at the after the credits now." So, oh, so cool. you you go to Avengers Endgame, and then they then show the new Spider Man trailer, which looks really good. Uh, they um, didn't show it when I was there. That no, no, me neither. So, yeah. so an epilogue um, that that looks really good. Other thoughts? Last thoughts? Um, great job. Like I said, I laughed, I cried, I cheered, I. Uh, it, what a great ending to uh, ten, 10 years worth of films. Mm. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited for the new Spider-Man movie and also the new Black Widow movie. Um, I thought that Infinity War was way better, but um, it definitely was a satisfactory and I really enjoyed it. 
and it was cool. There were some scenes in it that you're not going to get anywhere else. You couldn't get anywhere else. And that was, that was really cool. It was definitely a great send off. Um, yeah. Looking forward to the next oh, movies. Mm-hmm. I didn't get a chance to mention my other favorite scene. Uh, <laughs> Professor Hulk ripping his shirt off rawr, and then unenthusiastically smashing a car. Yeah. <laughs> right, wiping the glass off his head and then like lazily tossing a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. It's so it. amazing. I was thinking that when um, when the Sorcerer Supreme hit him in the chest and knocked uh, Bruce Banner out of Hulk, I thought, oh, this is when they're bringing back Hulk. This is how they do it. They're going to mess up that link that they have. And then they did. My, my first thought was the what if story when Loki takes Banner out of Hulk. As soon as I saw him leave the body, I was like, oh, that was a mistake. Yeah. But then he clumps over and, or slumps over and falls asleep. Yeah. Oh. Yep. So, so for my, any, I think I pretty much said how I felt about the movie and, and just thank you to everyone who made all these as, as a movie fan, even more as a movie fan than a comic book fan. You know, that, that's just so cool. Um, you know, I, I, I've been saying for years, like, we don't appreciate the MCU and what we're actually seeing because there's a little bit of, you know, fatigue, like, Oh my God, another movie I need to keep up with. And I get that, but this has never happened before. And I've been saying we don't appreciate it. And then it makes a billion dollars in its first weekend. I'm like, okay. Yeah, we I do. Guess, I guess we do. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool to be a part of. So um, now before we go, mm-hmm. one thing that would have been different in the movie if it had been an anime, because we are an anime podcast. Oh, crap. I forgot you asked that. <laughs> Mine is when they go to get the soul stone, you don't fall off a cliff. You fall into a bunch of tentacles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Because it's anime, and it's always women that fall down there, right? So we got to have tentacles. Yeah, and I guess along that line, uh, I guess m- most, if not all, of the women's chest would have been at least three times bigger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so mine is Tony Stark didn't die. He actually reappeared in a different world in a new body, and he's in an Isekai adventure. <laughs> I like that. Or, or how about he doesn't die because of willpower? <laughs> because of willpower. <laughs> he willpowered his way through the use of the gauntlet. <laughs> See, guys, we always talk about anime. All right, so we are currently watching Double Decker. I thought you were just going to say Double D. <laughs> after I was, I was really worried that that's what it was. Um, <laughs> well, it kind of is. D, D, Double Decker. It better not just be a big booby. Oh, of course. <laughs> okay. We are watching Double Decker, Doug, and Kirill. And we will be talking about that next week. Thank you guys for joining us. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Avenger Endgame once you've seen it. Or in definitely what would be different if it was an anime. Please leave your comments on our Twitter at Baca Podcast or our email, the anime Baca Club at gmail.com. Or leave a comment wherever you found this podcast and it will get back to us. We got to get going. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Sayonara.